This is an audio slate for dive H1979. UTC time is 23 hours, 36 minutes, and 40 seconds. Mark. Gonna launch the launch recover salvo. What is that? <clears throat> is that a jellyfish? That's a crazy looking jellyfish. It's a huge looking jellyfish.
we're doing pre-dive checks right now. Where are we going first? Okay. This is a good time for some SPL action. Maybe not. Yeah. Some, not a good time. No. I'm ready. All the, what entails um, the pre-dive checks? For the vehicles? Mm -hmm. Specifically, we get eyes and uh, on every piece of equipment on the vehicle. So we, we call that our power down checks and check all the cables, all the connectors, everything, make sure it looks all okay. And then we do our power ups where we turn everything on, check the electrical connections, um, make sure we're getting data on all the instruments and sensors. Um, and then we run through all of our hydraulic checks and high voltage checks, and then we put them in the water. So those pre-dive checks happen like on the deck and in the shop. Yep, on the deck, in the shop, and in the van. 
cool. And then are there checks that you folks do like on this initial descent? Like I, I feel like whenever I see Dan in here during the initial descent, I see him like moving the arm around and then also on the ascent too. Yeah, we have a number of things we do while we're diving. Um, one of them is move the arm around. Uh, it Just the, the hydraulic functions. Uh, we like to open the valves and uh, get it moving while we're descending with depth as pressure changes. Um, and just kind of shake it, shake it loose. And then there's a number of other things. We're always monitoring gauges and uh, voltages while we're descending um, as the effects of pressure and depth and temperature change. Thank you. Yeah. So I was noticing um, on one of the cams. What is so? There's that. What is that? Starboard. The starboard box. The starboard two box. Yes. With those balls sticking out of it. Are those gas tights? Those are actually push cores. Mm, push cores. Yep. And like those live there. Um. So they'll we'll take them off sometimes. We don't need them on certain dives, uh, but for this specific dive, the scientists want to collect push cores um, around the vent field. So we'll take those push cores off and push them into the mud and collect about a, a, a foot, one long foot, one foot long sample of uh, mud. Cool. Thank you, um, Lynette. What does what what does a navigator mapper do for pre-dive check kind things. Do you mind sharing? Also, Jake, um, do you think I should be getting clips of these? Getting what? Um, oh, sorry, Jacob. Oh. <laughs> Jacob. Jacob. Yeah, Excuse it, me. That it's was equally confusing. Uh -huh. um, if anything really cool swims across. Say again? Uh, yeah. Yeah? The, the, the audio? Mm -hmm. yeah, like sure. when they go over yeah. these pre-dive checks and all that. It can't hurt. OK, thanks. Sorry. Thank you, Lynette. <laughs> Um, for waiting while I was getting that answer. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, so our pre-dives, we make sure that we have all the maps that we need, all of the waypoints that we need. Um, we configure some of the instruments that we need to locate the vehicle subsea, make sure that that is all working. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah. For some reason, I thought you guys had a really elaborate list of to-dos. Um, we do have a long checklist, but it's mostly um, making sure we have all the maps and waypoints. We um, set up our sea log system for every dive, so that's kind of where we log different significant events that happen during the dive. We have to deploy the USBL transceiver um, in a moon pool on the ship, um, but that's the instrument that we use to locate the vehicle subsea, um, and we have to do a little bit of setting up and calibration with that each time we deploy. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Rika, do you mind sharing um, what your pre-dive, maybe post-dive, or? I actually honestly don't know what you do, so <laughs> I'd love to learn more. Well, being on the ship, my my main job is to um, take annotations to log our dives. Like for example, I'm now keeping an eye on the depths and taking annotations in regular depths approximately every 100 meter. Um, for pre-dive checks, I um, have a look at the um, dive plan once it's up to date and officially sent out so that I get an impression where we're we going first, what is an instrument being swapped and if so that entails um, a number of metadata and changes for me to check but mostly for my colleagues at onshore to support. For example, um, we will in this dive we will be swapping a Maris interface, a seismometer, that means um, in our downstream processes, we have to disconnect the old instrument from our, what I call digital map of um, of connections and um, to make space for the new 
device, but the new device must not be connected too early because that can cause problems as well. So I'm looking at which the instruments are being swapped. Then I check, do we have any samples? And if so, I try to um, yep. prepare those um, annotations in the in the software because every sample that we take comes with a number of attributes like um, lat long where it was taken, depths and an ID so that we can recognize it post dive again and I pr prepare those in advance as much as I can to not panic too much when they <laughs> actually happen on the fact. Yeah, and other than this I communicate a lot with my colleagues on shore whether um, the ports that we work on are powered down because we don't want to power uh, want to operate on live ports so um, I'm a bit in the inter interface between different teams working in the background mainly with some um, show support and our systems um, team and yeah that's basically it thank you um, how many people are shoreside Turning ports on and off. Uh, turning ports on and off? Maybe just one? But there would be people logging stuff. There would be people. Oh, you're asking. Never mind. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Thank you, Dirk. Too I'm bad that. SDL, so. Too bad that no one could hear you. <laughs> but. But what you said was exactly correct. Um, turning ports on and off is a um, task of our systems team, which currently is one. Um, I mean, team member, we, they have, we have time, and they probably, yeah, um, we'll probably be able to get around. switch over every week. So for one week, we have one um, person taking care of power requests and ports. And on shore support, when the, when the dive is happening, we have two people um, supporting me during dive logging and during the dive. Thank you for all that information that I just had you answer. You're welcome. Well, let's see. Mm. Jacob, let's hear about your pre-dive. My pre-dive checks? Yeah. So pre-dive checks of video are primarily just making sure that all of our cameras are functioning and uh, able to be controlled when we need them to be. Um, we have to make sure the metadata associated with all the recordings is going to be correct, so the correct dive number, expedition number, and um, the initials of the engineer on watch. And those are all stored in a file separate but right next to the video files. Um, so if need be, we can go into those files and see if anything had gone wrong, um, like who was on watch or whatever was going on. Um, besides that, it's just making sure things are recording at the right time. So we start our main recordings when the, as soon as the vehicles power on. Um, we have secondary recorders that we turn on as um, the, the sled ROV, in this case Atalanta, is being shipped off deck. And we are following Hercules off the, uh, off the ship with one of our cameras to be, make sure the, uh, the pilots can safely see what they're doing and also so we can keep an eye on the crew as they're near the edge of the rail. Um, that's primarily it in terms of our uh, our pre-dive checks. It's just a lot of making sure settings are right and making sure we're hitting record at the right time, making sure the right things are streaming to the right places on our three satellite feeds. Thank you. I have a question here that came in. Um, look like, so very cool to watch the launch, quite the choreography between the various people on deck. Look like Herc um, goes out behind to keep the umbilical cord taut. So the sled is pulled away from the ship when it enters the water. I'm assuming there is a limit to the pitch slash roll you can launch in. Would be um, very difficult in high seas. Yeah, there is a limit to the weather that we operate yeah. with in the vehicles. I wonder who can speak best about that. Definitely not me. Maybe Jake or Lynette can talk about that. Um, yeah, so we have some sort of general guidelines. It's always kind of a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but something like 25 knot winds and two to two and a half knot currents is usually kind of the no-go zone. 
Um, it depends a little bit um, what the forecast is, if that's expected to get better or worse over time. It depends a bit on what the period of the swell is um, and things like that. But as a, as a general guide, that's kind of our limit. Thank you. Of course. I'm so happy that that little bow in the camera is gone. That one that's in satellite feed three, there was like a little thing in the camera that like made it go like. Oh you know. yes. What happened? How do you fix that? Um, are you talking about in the, the main ROV camera or in the? The one that has the um, starboard view that's looking at the push cores right now. Um, I actually am not entirely sure why that goes away. It might have something to do with um, being in the water, but that's a good question. I don't do much of the. I don't have much control over the um, the cameras on the ROV itself. That's the ROV pilots can control those cameras. Well, what was the question? Um, why the the um, the border or the uh, you can see the housing in the the starboard port uh, camera or this yeah the starboard camera. Um. Can you just see the housing? Usually there's, um, it almost looks like, almost like a fisheye lens type effect on it with the, the circle border. Yeah, well, dark, so, sometimes you see the vignette of the yeah. camera and That's the way it's for. just about the alignment of the camera inside the housing itself. Yeah. And, um, um, you're talking about the one with the... Uh, the push cores. Push cores? Yeah. Those are wide-eye cameras. Oh, they are? Yes. Okay. So they have a fisheye effect. Then they probably, that would probably explain it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hmm. So, how many push course samples are we taking tonight? Tonight, on this dive, there are five on there. What is that? It's gone now. Bye. <laughs> you guys ever watched um, what is that? Avatar, and it's like a wall. That thing looked like a wall, just upside down. Oh, I was going to ask which avatar. Do you know which one I'm talking about now? The blue people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So the, the number two avatar. Mm. Not So there's the blue people avatar, and then there's the... the avatar Aang. The element bending avatar. And that's a superior one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So blue people avatar. Got it. Yes. Blue people avatar. We don't discriminate on color. Getting, getting um, next generation vibes right now. Whoa. Co-pilot comms check. Check, check. Excellent. There is a question. Who is the, in all caps, real Atalanta pilot? Real? I know. I was like, I feel like all of you guys are Atalanta and Herc pilots. Mm -hmm. Or am I? Technically, my job description says Atalanta pilot. Mine says Argus, but Argus is nowhere to be found. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. It does say Argus. It's kind of like junior pilot and senior pilot. Yeah. But I they like don't want us calling, they don't want to call us junior and senior. So it's just pilot Argus and -pilot. pilot and hook yeah. pilot. I like that because we're always learning here. It's really fun to watch this. Uh, what is that word? Passing down of the torch? <laughs> Quite literally, passing of the arm. What would it take for me to try and um, manipulate the arm? Like, what do I have to do? Because I just want to try it. You come over here and we let you move it around a little bit. Oh, yeah? You want to try? I'm so down. OK. What do you think, pilot? You think that's OK? I mean, we're not, are we doing a transect or anything? That's the only. Are we doing a transect? I don't think so. I don't think no, we're doing a No, no transect at the moment. No transect. I mean, come on yeah. down here. I'll have my finger on the button, ready to halt. <laughs> <laughs> as I as I always no. am with. It's like a just in case. Okay, no pilot's gonna sign off the mic real quick. Ready that. It's like driver's Nothing. ed. You got Nothing. your yeah. your uh, emergency pedal. 
need a student driver sticker to slap on the side. Oh, well, yep. we have one of those. <laughs> there you go. It's fantastic. You gonna know, walk her through it there, Danny? You can, you can plug into the trainer. Yeah, there should be a slide available. Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe I can plug into the trainer. Yeah. Should I, should I plug into the trainer? Let's, tr hold up. Let's, let's train. Can you mic, um, mute me? This is going to be epic. So, <laughs> is Val and I plugged into train? <laughs> you put him on SPL? There you are. There there we here we are. Okay, so this is going to be uh, craft training 101. So, the way this works is basically everything you do with this arm, that arm will follow. So, you have mm -hmm. your shoulder, this is movement. Shoulder. This is your shoulder. This is your elbow. Elbow. Then you have wrist up, wrist yaw, wrist, up, wrist, wrist yaw. rotate is going to be these two buttons here. Rotate. And then the squeeze the jaw is going to be to squeeze this trigger. Oh, they're on so both sides? So you kind of do one of these motions. I usually use two hands, and I kind of pull and adjust like this. Mm. Nice, gentle movements. And I'm going to go live for this. We clear for the hydraulics? Clear. So, this button up here is yellow. Is when this light's on, the arm is frozen. Mm. When it's off, the arm is live. So if you watch, you can freeze, reposition, unfreeze. Mm. And so you got full range of movement here. So she's shoulder, elbow, mm -hmm. wrist yaw, wrist, yaw, wrist, wrist up. up and down. We got wrist rotate, <clears throat> and then you've got jaw close. Is that a button over here? It's this trigger right here. It's, oh, it's uh, front and back. Okay. So I'm gonna freeze. Go ahead. Just remember Just slow, nice and slow movements. And, comfortable. <laughs> and when you're ready, push this button on top. Jake, I can hear your anxiety. <laughs> I remember what it was like the first time doing it. <laughs> Can I push this button one? Yes. Push that button. Pushing the button. And now you are in control of that arm. Slow movements. And if you run out of room, pause it. Pause. Reposition. Oh, got to pause it. Please oh, fail. I thought I pushed pause. <laughs> oh, sometimes it doesn't listen. Uh, this it, is pause. Okay, so you pause yeah. right now. So go ahead, reposition. There you go. And then hold. Now push it in once. once. There you go. Now you're in control. This is trippy. <laughs> I like can't see it. I so rotate like, your jaws. I want to pause. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, oh gosh. Please go. <laughs> Am I in trouble? No. No, you're good. <laughs> this was a group decision. This is an educational <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> group decision. Okay. Um, I want to bring the shoulder back up. Okay, coming back on. Shoulder up. Pause. Okay. Wow. I think now no I pressure. find a new wife's calling. <laughs> you're doing the, great. At least we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's why we do training <coughs> in the water column. Yeah, that's how you start. You can't hit anything. Mm -hmm. I'm down for It's like that. driving in a parking lot. <laughs> Whenever I practice 
watching people <laughs> drive for me, I stand in the parking lot and not in the car so that I don't have to like jerk with the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so go ahead and turn your wrist and wave at us. Oh wait, do what's the instruction? You gotta turn your wrist. Why can't I hear you? You can't hear me? Okay, now I can hear you. Oh, That's much well, better. Oh wow, no one can hear me. That's okay. I don't need to be heard. So, unfreeze. Unfreeze. Turn your wrist to the left. Wrist to the left. Is that the wrist? Yep. Swing that arm over. Arm? Yep, just like this. Okay. Now uh -huh. you can spin. Now squeeze the trigger. Squeeze this trigger? Yep. Squeeze. Oh, wow, that's hard. What am I, I'm not squeezing no, it. No, it's up here, it's up here. Oh, that one? Yeah, you can also use your thumb on the front if you want. This part? The no, arrows. down here. Oh, down here. look, it turned. Yep. Wow, that's really fast. How do I close the jaw? Just like that. I did it. Oh, you have to, like, hold it down. It gives you a whole new appreciation for what we can do on the bottom of the ocean. I think I paused it. That's okay. Oh, you did good. No, I did that on purpose. I have to do it again? Do whatever you want. Okay, I think if I'm done If you had enough, now. let me know. <laughs> I'm done. Okay, I'm that's good. <laughs> you did wonderfully. Good job. I can't wait to um, so see Jacob try and do it one happen. day. <laughs> we'll get you to do it. Mm -hmm. Just do some raves. Make sure now Danny's just showing happy. off. <laughs> I said, now Danny's just showing off. Let's see here. Can I make a talk? <laughs> Hello. You gotta like put words to its talking now. Hello. I'm Mr. Kraft. <laughs> you should have seen me uh, doing some puppeteering on the, in the hangar on the, on the transit over. Mm. We had a bucket and I was like oh, I bu showing the bucket around and being like pointing at the bucket like, hey, change, change please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is some major pre-dive warm-up for the for the craft arm. It's really yeah, good, right? This is a, this is a part of our pre-dive. This is something we do dive. during us during, dive during it, and basically moving the air around in the arm, and working the hydraulics, and making sure that everything is equalizing as we are descending to the depths. So, what do you look for when you're equalizing? Um, we just want to make sure if you have full uh, motion of the arm, nothing's getting caught, nothing's being um, disrupted. Nothing's jumpy but or shaky. In the, the biggest in the thing functions. is there's a bunch of cavities inside and everything is full of oil. So mm. when the ocean pressure is crushing on the arm, it's equal on the inside. It's actually more positive pressure on the inside than it is on the outside. So we want to do is make sure any air that's trapped in there gets to move around and come up and out of the arm. Mm and allow us to have a solid liquid uh, compression. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but... It kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. I sometimes Think of a soda can. When you, uh, you have a soda can, how tight, how you can't squeeze a soda can when it's closed, mm -hmm. but if you open it, it's... Mm -hmm. Exactly that noise, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I will exit the front row now. Do you mind Did you have fun? me? I had tr so much fun. Yeah, of course. We good on our Delta? We're great. Excellent. <laughs> nice tutorial. I think I'm I think she could understand it. Yeah. More training than I had the first time I touched an arm. Yeah. <laughs> You're just really intuitive about it. One of the best ways to understand something yourself is to try and teach someone. Mm -hmm. what, what to do. I agree. <coughs> Thank you for letting me sit over there and handle the craft arm. I was thinking about a few comments that were coming in, and it totally says, um, Danny, Dan is in the lounge watching. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I also do That's think that um, Jacob put the view, the bubble view from oh, above our yeah. seats. On the quad <laughs> cam, so sure. everyone in the in the 
mess whoever's enjoying dinner and watching what's happening. <laughs> Look, I have been told to um, always put satellite feed three to something relevant to what's going on. Yeah. Mm. I'm just following my orders. No, that was great. That was fun. That's what we're here for, you know? Exactly. So does that mean the next time we come on watch, and if it's a descending or an ascending time and we're allowed to, can we get you on there? So We'll see. Yeah. And then you have to put up the cap. Depends if we get in trouble for this one first. Mm. <laughs> we shall see. Now, what would be fun is when we're doing complex maneuvers like we were doing last night with like picking up the box and moving plugs and stuff, that camera view, get to show the public exactly what it takes to do the moves that we do. Uh, I'm going to keep that in mind. This is the this camera, is too. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, the... Yeah, there's that camera, we've yep. got that camera. Yeah, I, I put the overhead there, one on. There's yeah. another camera that right there here. above the radar. Um, screen yep. too. That one, because then that shows like what's happening in your face. Like the so focus. you can zoom in on it and like see exactly what kind of movements I do. I mean, so Ed was sitting over here the other day with the camera on the back deck, and on that he was actually looking at the moon on the back deck as we're floating, mm -hmm. and he was flying that camera like a fighter pilot. Mm. Like it was crazy the movement he was doing with that joystick. It looked like he was about to rip the joystick off the console, Whoa. but he kept the moon in perfect view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not that good yet. We've got to do that with the uh, with, with our flight sticks. I mean, with with Hook, we're not that crazy with it because we're in water. Everything's kind of slower to react, but it's constantly fight um, one, a little this way, a little that way, back, forth, up, yeah. down, just keeping everything in balance. Put some turbo on. <laughs> With the arm, everything's very slow, methodical, but... Steady as she goes. You can come up to an object and we're like, okay, we gotta plug this cable into this box. We gotta think about, okay, how am I going to do that? I'm gonna swing the arm to the right, I'm gonna send my wrist out, rotate 30 degrees to the left, and that way when I grab it, I only have to rotate this way to plug in least amount of movements in the most efficient way possible. And smooth, which I have trouble with sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I just want to plug it in. So are we headed directly to the IP when we land? Yeah, um, I'll run it by Dan when he comes down, okay. or he comes up, but the plan right now is to go directly to, IP, to the IP-12, or JB-12, which is a northern IP. <coughs> okay. What is an IP? Uh, it's just instrument platform. Instrument platform. And then the second step is to drop the sandbag, correct, and see what our ballast is like? Yeah, well, the second, s yeah. So he, Dan has a plan. So once he come up, comes up here, um, we'll figure out how to start the dive. The first thing is to swap the Maris. But okay. there are some steps and checks that the ROV needs to do before. So yes. we'll play around. I don't know exactly where he wants to do it, but wherever he feels, it's good. Doesn't matter to me. Okay, um, we just might need to move the ship a little bit. Where does the ship need to go? Uh, just a little bit more sort of southwest. Because mm -hmm. right now it looks like we're over where the camera is. But we might settle out a little bit more as we get closer to the bottom. Mm-hmm. So I'll leave that for Lynette. Watch it in the video, two seconds. <laughs> what, did, what did Dan say about it? Did, did, did Dan see? No. Oh, okay, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, can the data feed show the water pressure? Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Paro. Oh, well, it gives us our depth. But you can convert to 1.5 times the ocean Danny, depth. Danny, I can't, I can't hear you. You're on I mute. I don't know why. Uh, you know, it always helps when I turn the mic on before talking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get you a uh, calculation real quick, a depth to uh, salt water pressure. About 1,600 mm. PSI, I'm going to guess. Uh, 1,100 meters. I swear, I need to get a... 
I know there's an app for this, but I always go to the website to do it. <laughs> what so website? what are the meters? Maybe we're at 1,200 meters right now? We are at 1,219 meters. So 1,200 meters, our pressure is 1,747 PSI or 120 bar. I was close. I said 1,600. Yeah. A quick calculation you can do is you can multiply the depth in meters by 1.5 and you get a quick estimate in PSI of how yeah. what the pressure is. Quick and rough estimate. But we're engineers. We deal in absolutes. Yeah. Scientists are the ones who deal in estimates. Because <laughs> nothing is absolute in science. Would you agree, Dirk? Or disagree? With that? Yeah, I, I can kind of agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't say Pretty passionately low. agree, but agree. Well, I mean... Soft yes. Soft yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have the hypothesis and <coughs> all those steps. The engineers have to make estimates as well, but we'll tend to overestimate to be under a factor of, or in within a factor of safety. Exactly. <coughs> so it's every 30 feet or 10 meters is one bar. Yeah, I think it's like 1.4 psi, but I think 1.5 is a little easier math. Yeah. And it's an over, you gotta over make, You gotta make the math easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all mental math, no calculators. One bar is 9.96 .9 meters, so 10 meters. 32.6 feet. Yeah, I remember that from my diving class. That's important when you're diving. Mm -hmm. do, you, um, do you all use feet and inches and PSI and that, or do you use meters? Um, that depends on who you ask. Some people like feet. I don't like feet. Feet are a weird way to measure things. And then people are like, oh, yards. What? Meters. Meters. Let's throw in fathoms. I do We're meters for fathoms. depth, but when it comes to machining, Isn't I am. Is a fathom six feet? 100% inches. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. Or any kind of building, like carpentry or anything like this, it's so much more intuitive to go in feet, but any length, like cable lengths and mm -hmm. stuff like this, I can't, yeah, never yeah. beat, always It's meters. really hard to convert back and forth. For some reason, I like PSI, too, over bar, I don't know. I do like PSI. It's a little more precise. I like pounds over kilograms, mm -hmm. but I don't like doing math in any of them. Yeah, no mm -hmm. math. Not even a metric. <laughs> or converting cups to other types of volumes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How many tablespoons are in a cup? No one knows those things. Also, yeah, but, but those are a hassle even in in metric. Yeah. Liters, gallons. Well, yeah, liter, liters. And but like if you're going into the tiny little <laughs> grams and stuff, it doesn't like teaspoon to grams. I don't know. Well, it also depends on what you're measuring, you know, because you have a volume versus a weight. Yeah. Back to the cup thing. There's liquid cups, and then then there's dry cups. Dry cups. Mm -hmm. Like what? Like weight <laughs> ounces and fluid ounces. And mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, back in the day, no one measured anything anyway. <laughs> you just it measure with your heart. <laughs> yeah. It's a smidge. I'm, a still a, I'm still a fathoms person. Oh God! That's really. Oh, no, I kind of like the leagues. leagues. Let's explore our talk. Uh -huh. <laughs> it just sounds cool. Fathoms. It does. Yeah. It does sound like you're exploring. There we go. I now I've added a water pressure calculator to my homepage. Your homepage on Facebook or Instagram? No, on my phone. Oh. <laughs> so now I can just push Instagram. a button. Instagram. Got to have this calculator on there. <laughs> well, I mean, back in the days of MySpace, you could put HTML anything. Link in my bio, or see link in bio to calculate pressure per <laughs> meter in the ocean. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Via statement. Question Very about specific. Yeah. 
Do I need to speed up? Oh, you need to speed up. I need to speed up. I need to slow down. <laughs> yeah, I'm like at my speed limit. Question about Herc's arm. Uh, this person watched the difficult repair the other day and saw that they drained the hydraulic fluid. Since Herc is operating deep in the ocean at the pressures just mentioned, are the hydraulics different than convention than conventional, such as on the deck cranes, like the fluid used, or the hoses and seals? Actually, it's very similar. We do use a hydraulic oil that can handle temperature, extreme cold, and yeah. high pressure. Um, it doesn't, basically, it doesn't demix itself or gas at pressure, but it's also eco-friendly. So if we do have a leak or anything at the bottom of the ocean, it, uh, it doesn't harm the environment, so it's bio-friendly. But the system is pretty well identical to a system you would find on the deck of a ship or in a crane, uh, in a bulldozer. It's moving fluid to create work. Thank you. Have any of you um, ever been jump scared by a big shape going by the camera? <laughs> we we had um, these really long siphonophores that would float across the screen off the coast of California, and they looked identical to the tether or to fishing line. So we would kept thinking we were getting like tangled, and every time we'd be like, "Well, oh no!" But then it would it would go away. That's more like of a safety concern, yep. kind of a jump. Uh -huh. That's good. So you, not really. Not really. That octopus that came out from underneath the platform a week or so ago was a little startling. He was mad. We were in his space. We were invading his home. There was no knock knock. There was just entering. And he was like, what? I mean, it was basically a bulldozer showing up at your front door on Sunday morning. Like, mm. this loud, bright, obnoxious thing just shows up at your house. Like, especially when you've never seen light ever before, it's like being abducted by aliens. Ooh, what are we launching now? Are we launching something, or are we just moving things around the deck? Um, where are we looking? They're ah. just moving things. Um, they're getting ready for their mooring recovery tomorrow mm. morning. So at the end of this dive, at a site called RC South, we're releasing, a, I think it's 250 meter mooring. And the first plan tomorrow is to use, you can kind of see that spool on the deck cam towards the left. That would go through a roller on the gunnel on the port side, right side of your screen. And we're just clearing the kind of the area in between the spooler and the roller. Mm. Why did my screen go blank? I like that view a lot better on the uh, hooks aft cam. Yeah, you can actually see what's going on. It's a usable camera now. Which camera are you talking about? Uh, Hercules aft camera, which is the first one on the mm -hmm. screen here, mm -hmm. where we see the tether coming out of the back of Hercules. Mm -hmm. If you see the light, that's Atalanta in the, in the distance. Mm -hmm. And if you look on the screen next to it, you can see Hercules coming out of the back of Atalanta. Mm -hmm. So we can see both vehicles in view and know everything's happy. Mahalo. That was an interesting in and out of my screen here and like turned to black for a couple minutes. But we're back. Back and ready for more. Do we have Alvin plates on Hercules right now? We do. Yes, four of them. Please, if you guys have brain space, <clears throat> to let us know when you guys are about to launch one of those because we are supposed to take a video clip of it for a later video that's Are we releasing the oven, oven weight? We don't do it very often. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
to kind of a... Uh, we may be picking one up off mm. of the platform. I don't know. I don't know what the... Uh, Usually if we drop them, it's because we need to ascend quickly. Or we pick up something unexpected. Mm. To balance out. Yeah? Yep. Keep everything neutral. Perfectly balanced, as everything should be. Do you guys know what a LIDAR is? L-I-D-A-R? Light detection and ranging? Does Hercules have one? No. Not at the moment. We have sonars, various sonars, which yeah. are sound navigation and ranging equipment. A 3D printer has LIDAR. <coughs> light doesn't, um, or light attenuates very quickly underwater, so we use sound because it has mm. more energy. And can travel farther, right? Yep, underwater. Denser medium, things attenuate faster. Is there anybody in here that's still in school? Me. Ooh, what school do you go to? I go to the University of Rhode Island. Mm. What uh, degree are you pursuing? Uh, ocean engineering, graduate degree. Mm. How's that going? Uh, yeah, it's going, it's going. Are you on your first year, second year? First year. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Everybody else, we're all done with school? I mean, technically, we're all in school every day. We're learning something new. Hmm. It's a nice perspective. Lifelong learner. Yeah, Danny? Of course. Of course. We lost the vehicles. Is the current just so strong that it's pushing? Oh, no, they're right there. They're US popping US in and out. Is very unhappy. <laughs> I wonder if Dan's going to come up and relieve us for dinner. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Dan, if you're in the lounge, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> What's for dinner, Lynette? The huge, the huge, yeah. A smorgasbord yeah. of a little bit of everything. Potatoes, pasta, corn, peas. Some fruit. lamb in there. Yeah, I don't know what the meat is. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. There's lamb. There's chicken. There's uh, calamari, mm. or squid, like kind of baked calamari, not fried. I'm getting hungry, by the uh, minute. There's like a potato, kind of like a. I would almost say. Shepherd's pie kind of looking thing. Mm. Looks pretty good. And then you know, the spread of vegetables. There's also like Thai chicken. Mm. I think like, like chicken with kind of like a nose. Yeah, it's like for eating over rice. It's like got a bit of a sweet sauce to it. Mm -mm. It's pretty good. It's all, mm. it's all good. My relief is here for dinner. Thank you. Lucky you. Ouch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't receive your message because my phone is charging in the other room. Okay. No, <laughs> did, were you watching the screen? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> see you guys at dinner and or after. I'll go. I'll go check in on Dan for you guys. Yeah. Okay. BRB. <laughs> Everything's being recorded. She has her headphone on. That's good. I need to get a greatest hits video of my uh, manipulations so I can study them like a football player. <laughs> Where did I go wrong? How do I improve? Yeah, it is kind of cool. You can go back and see all the highlights, anything cool you saw. It's all on YouTube. Yeah. <clears throat> we have a lot of stuff on TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, that's where bloopers end up.
kind of interesting that we have only a depth readout on the Theo Scientific. I feel like it would be easy to have Just depth and pressure. Conversion, yeah. You could do that but within the software. Yeah. I think um, the Grafana might have it, though. If you go to... Uh, pilot full. Science, science dive data, maybe. Well, I know we have RV Pilot Plus. Oh, you know where it might be? Uh, pilot Plus doesn't give me anything. Oh, even the CTD reads out depth. No yeah. pressure. Could even do that conversion in Grafana. Could do it anywhere. Simple math. Yeah. I can't even po I can't program to save my life, but you know what? I think I could program that. Temperature is 2.2 degrees. Is that in Fahrenheit or Celsius? That'd be Celsius, for sure. Yeah, that's true. It ain't that cold down here. We're not that deep. What is the what is two degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? I've never used Fahrenheit before for anything. It's definitely not Fahrenheit. <laughs> definitely no. not two degrees. Isn't 32 Fahrenheit. the zero point? Yeah. Like the um, 32 is the freezing, freezing point of water, freezing yeah. Point, yeah. So 2 degrees Fahrenheit is negative 16 Celsius. And 2 degrees Celsius is 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit, oh. says Google. Sounds hot. It, <laughs> yep, if you're, <laughs> if, if you're thinking in Celsius. <laughs> yeah, my only reference is like country music when they always sing about sunny 75. <laughs> so that's like, okay, it's gotta be like 22, 25 degrees Celsius, I don't know. 24. 24, okay. So I need a nice day, 75. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> the control van does have a few Canadians in it right now. Used to colder weather, maybe, who's, who's maybe not. Who's Canadian? Just, so just me just, and you? Just me and you? Huh? I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. Interesting. I think a nice day for me in Hawaii is going to be probably like, what, don't 29 rub it in. degrees? Come on, Danny, don't rub it in. 29 is a little warm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a normal day in Hawaii. <laughs> pretty, Hawaii is pretty known for some wind too, right? Like, there's always a breeze. That's a nice thing about it. It's like the wind can be blowing and it's not cold. Not when the trades are not there. They're just extremely humid and hot. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll see you guys in a short bit. But I mean, you guys look at me and here, up here in, up here in Canada waters, I've got full under armor on, a sweatshirt. You never see still Danny cold. Yeah, you never see Danny without a toque. Oh, the weather is <laughs> nice here. Also right. known as a cap. The weather is surprisingly um, warm this trip What's outside. Nice? Anyway, <laughs> I've been able to sit outside every every meal. Yep, that's not usual. It's funny because I grew up in Oregon, and this is normal weather for me. But totally, I've lived in Hawaii for the last seven years, so you've my skin got a little thin. You've climatized. <laughs> Videos back on comms.
There's a viewer <coughs> curious about um, Herc. Um, I don't know where Mal and I left with the questions, but uh, you can just tell me if it was already answered. Uh, newest question that came in is just wondering if there's latency on your arm, on the manipulator arm. I'm Barely anything. It's not noticeable. It's right. in the millisecond range, yeah. and Pardon? basically we use an optical uh, link. So Speed we use light. fiber optics to connect with our data between the controls and the vehicle. So everything we tell the vehicle to do happens not instantaneously, but faster than the human can actually recognize. Right. Yep. Very cool. Was the question about LIDAR asked? Yes. Okay. There you go. And we ha have we had a chitter chatter about uh, where we're where we're going and what we're going to do. Um, I don't think not when I was in the control van. All right. So we're headed to the main Endeavour field, and we're going to do some instrument swaps and some gas tight sampling. And looks like we're going to do some of the instrument instrumentation that we're going to put in our seismometers, which helps us detect uh, earthquakes. We're going to do some push cores where we can analyze the sediment. We might do a transect, and we're going to try to recover <coughs> a bars, which is um, bathymetric. It's like benthic. Benthic. Is it benthic? Yeah. And benthic and resistivity sensor, sensor yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's it. And there was one where the, the hydrothermal venting structure, um, the minerals precipitate out when it hit, they hit the cold water. So the hydrothermal vent basically encased one of the instruments. <coughs> so we're going to try to uh, remove that instrument, recover it. And the bars is kind of cool because it gives us temperature readout, right? Yeah, it does. And also, um, yeah, it's kind of fun yeah, to watch this. Yeah, this the is where you're losing me. I don't exactly know what the bar uh, measures beyond that. Resistivity, yep. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> is is that that gives us a proxy proxy for salinity, right? Or for <sighs> is it other things? I don't know. I'm not sure. All right, let's look this up. Make our banter accurate. <laughs> yeah, this is just <laughs> guessing. Are you slowing me down? Speeding me up? What is our first task once Slow we down get down there? Bit. Are we going in order of the dive plan, <coughs> or are we jumping around a little? Um, no, we'll follow the dive plan, like the plan itself, but not the objectives as listed. So the first thing we're going to be doing is doing going to the IP, mm -hmm. and then our first objective is to swap the Maris seismometers. Okay. So there's a few things we have to do in terms of ballasting and test flights and maybe some inspections, but uh, the objective is to swap the seismometer. Okay. Cool. So the <coughs> the bars, the benthic and resistivity sensors, they give us an estimate of chloride concentration, temperature, and the redox potential within a black smoker vent, uh, with a recording of a time series of fluid resistivity. Very cool. Yeah, it sounds like pretty specific science. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an interesting concept, the bars, uh, that to use them you have to stick them inside a hydrothermal vent that's hot enough. It's quite a process to install them. But they're, they kind of, I think I heard you calling them the little pigs. Yeah, the instrument itself has got these goofy little legs that so makes it look like a pig. Yeah. I always appreciate the nicknames for the equipment. <laughs> we have the pigs in the, the aquatic bongos. Yep. Yeah, we got the chicken bucket. Exactly. I mean, we could paint the bars pink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of looks like a pig with the feet. Yep. It's the silver pig. Oh, and we have the chicken bucket. Yeah, what else? We've got some other good chicken ones. Yeah, I don't know if you mentioned the chicken bucket. 
I didn't, but uh, it, it looks the part. Yeah. <laughs> Even got the KFC sticker on it. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. And uh, someone's asking about the Telestrator and um, when we are doing some specific things today, Dirk will probably use the Telestrator again. And sometimes I know Ed is able to, I don't know, is able to uh, project that as well. So it's seen out on the, in our satellite feeds that are live. But um, I guess folks were not seeing that. Yeah, with All the, the, uh, the closed captions, I don't think we can route that feed in. Yeah. Well, you can see it in the uh, qua in the, <laughs> the control room camera. Right. <clears throat> right. So if you, if I guess that'd be satellite feed four? Uh, there is uh, only three go out. Okay. Um, that's just the, what the studio seeing that goes up in our, our local feeds. But uh, streaming out, there's just one, two, and three. All right. Cool fact that Ed taught us about the Telestrator, Canadian invention. Huh. Canadians get all the cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, I tried all dressed chips for the first time in my life, and oh. now I'm addicted. <laughs> <laughs> so I will pay extra on Amazon to get all dressed chi uh, chips sent to my house. Really? You can get chips sent to your house. There you go. <laughs> Like nine bucks a bag for chips. <laughs> <laughs> All dressed chips are pretty good. They're kind of amazing. <laughs> kind of. Okay, so Chip Tip. Um, there's a brand called uh, Covered Bridge. You guys seen those? Well, I've never seen it though. No. Wow. Oh. So it's a <clears throat> it's a company out of I think PEI or maybe New Brunswick. And um, you can buy them, of all places, you can buy them at Red Barn in Victoria. Okay. You can buy them at Thrifty's. Are they good, these chips? Ridiculously good. The best chips, in my opinion. What kind of flavors do they have? They have, they have a Storm Watcher flavor. So it's like salt and vinegar, barbecue, and two other flavors, and it's all mixed into one bag. Oh, So it's kind of like all dressed, leveled up. Yeah. It's it's pretty decent. So I'm going to have to get your information and send you a Venmo to send me a care package? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Danny care package. <laughs> An additional toque for when you come back to Canada. <laughs> and I'll, just, I'll send you uh, stuff from Hawaii and yes. you can send me stuff from Canada. And Sounds we'll good. It'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be like, oh my goodness, pen pals. Chip pals. Chip pals. Check it out, people. Covered bridge. The real question is, are they kettle cooked chips? They are not kettle cooked chips. In my opinion, those are the superior. Oh, like you like them really crunchy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these might not be the chips for you. Still taste, sounds I've delicious. Been fantastic, yeah. Had some, I picked up a bag of old Dutch burst and onion. Oh yeah. And when I grabbed them from the little uh, mini mart on the way back to the boat when I just ran into town, the lady at the counter was like, we have these? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. They were amazing. Okay, what do you all think about dill pickle flavored chips? I'm on board 100% all of the time. Yeah, that is, that's a good flavor. I used to always not dare try it and once i started eating it i we used to give it like get it as gags at parties because no one would eat it so the chips last all night oh but <laughs> that sounds like a terrible students, party well no it says <laughs> students right so people just show up and they eat your chips so you just get that that and plain and then it grew on me now i love the dill, dill so flavors. i used to really dislike the like salt and vinegar yeah but it, as i've gotten older i really enjoy it yes flavors change Trader um, Joe's hmm. had this dill pickle popcorn. Oh. So oh, yeah, that sounds Ooh. good. So good. We have three beams. Yep, 111 meters. Getting close to the bottom. I am going to go into manual mode. Going to manual. 
dirt. We take out our uh, covered bridge deal is the best. Yeah, I'll get that autopilot, like Danny said. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> so we got lots of stuff in Hawaii. I'm sure you could you'd like. Yeah, what's the, yeah, what's I that chip flavor that's there? There's the the hula skirt brand. Like a very Hawaiian. I can't remember. Yeah, chip what flavor well, you got Hawaiian chips uh, chip company. And they have yeah. some really good, like sweet, spicy chips, and uh, yeah, that's true. Okay, so we'll get to about five zero meters altitude, and then I'll come yep. up under. Yeah, depth uh, here at Atlanta. Main Endeavor should be two one nine six. I don't know if that tracks with your. Yes, ultimate. it does. About eighty nine feet off, eighty nine meters off bottom. Just remember, there could be spires thirty meters up in the up in the column as well. Roger. But looks from your uh, on the nav screen. That's oh, oh oh. Hang on, I can see it in this screen here. Herc's all the way up there. Yeah, you're kind of up by the. Yeah, you you don't want to really be there where you all are right. with Herc. Well, we can go all stop now, and I can come under Atlanta now. That's kind of a bit of a danger zone near Dante right. and Grotto. I'll stop on the winch. I'll stop on the winch. Normally, when we fly there, we like to follow a cable so we know exactly where we are. Because last time, when we were here a few dives ago, the nav was offset by like 50 meters. So it's just something to keep in mind. Did, it, did our 681 get uh, zeroed? Yes. Okay. There's also um, the grotto camera lights are on. So that's normally a really good way to kind of figure out where you are as you approach the bottom. You can see them from, I don't know, 80, 90 meters away around it. Because it kind of changes with whichever, whatever the current's doing with this plume, I guess it throws off the nav, I think. Seems really hazy right now. Yeah, that's all the plume stuff. Yeah. Sitting. I guess when I started my watch, when we were diving here last, we were already here. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see us like come into it. Yeah, it's not as hazy when you get down below. Mm -hmm. It's just this is just in the vent plume uh, above, I guess, above it. And probably also why we do some of the sediment traps and stuff in this area, right? Yeah, I believe so. Well, Ricky, have you, who, who normally <laughs> lets all the scientists know that the dive's on the bottom? Can you put the uh, porch on bubble Like down to all the PIs? Say that again, please. Aye, aye, Captain. I got you, Goose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to come down some more? Uh, not yet. Let's just get in the box here. Roger. He normally doesn't miss a dive. What's your heading? Oh no, okay. If you were to face the other way, potentially see the camera if you needed it, but it's to the north, kind of by Grotto. Okay.
You have three minutes. Ready? All right, you're right under. You don't need a second person? Okay. Signing off. What's happening, Lynette? Where are we? Where am I going? Am I hitting the bottom yet? You uh, can land anywhere in here. This is the first thing that we want to check out. Where are but this should be a relatively flat area, in theory. In theory? Yep. Why is he way down there then? Was he just headed up there? Um, nope. He came down from the north, I think maybe overshot a little. But. Right. Uh, compass is not updating there. It's happening. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this is not updating at all anymore. The ship position is updating. I wonder where I am. Interesting. Where could I be? Oh, now you're updated. Hmm. Hmm. Strange. Mm -hmm. uh, north. I keep looking at that. It's, we get, it's like really slow. So the camera to the grotto lights are on, so normally we can see them when we're up in the column like this. If you, if we do suspect the nav to be off, which we don't know yet. Well, we always suspect nav to be off. So, fun fact, some of the uh, venting structures in the Endeavour hydrothermal vent area have cool What's names. the arm flapping in the breeze <laughs> over there? <laughs> we got smoke and mirrors, faulty towers.
Looks like an oily. So red and white. If it's if it's red and white, it connects the IP south and north together. Oh, so this is the IP right ahead of us with the two larval traps over on the left. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was the dessert? Oh. No, are we jiving? I sure have uh, jiving with. Of course it is. Just going to uh, press a few buttons here. Uh, Auto XY. Try this one. The old double tap bug. up the manipulator if you're comfortable with that stick it out in front of the vehicle so uh, yeah are you good are you you know how to run that thing no want to learn Roger let me see that thing Let's see if I can poke my eye out you ready Jacob can we get the um, the lasers off for the white balance Roger thank you Yeah, I'll start zooming in. Oops, sorry, sorry. No, nope, all set. Happy there. A little bit tighter. Yeah. That should be good for me. Roger. All right, the camera's about to go black for a couple, uh, little bit. Right. Intentional with the black balance. Live, totally live. I'm just gonna have a look at my uh, bottom gauges here. Oh, go to preset. Oh, I'll just snap a map. Preset too. It's no big deal. Gauges are good. down later, but they're nominal, nominal, res 3, main, 4, 
Okay. Okay, Micro, we are all yours. What are we okay. doing? Okay, so the first objective is to swap that Maris seismometer. Um, now, we might want to do some um, some scouting. The new one is currently in the tool basket. The old one we've looked at on a previous dive as well. And uh, there was some talk before the dive about wanting to make sure our ballast works well and then we can fly with a certain amount of buoyancy. I oh think you yeah. had a plan for that, hey, Dan? Yeah, the whole 80, yeah, I recall that. So we go to the basket. So the basket is where the objective will start, but wherever you want to play around with it is fine. No, I, think, I think the plan was to go to the basket. I can figure out what button to push here. This one. And if I remember, the basket is... Yeah, it should be down here, yeah. In this direction. There. Sorry, I don't know what a mirrors is. Pardon? You're just a little quiet. I don't know what a mirrors is. Some contraption in Oh, here. the Maris? Yeah. Yeah, that's this one with the two football float or the two benthos floats attached to it. Right, right. And we left a bit of a mess here. Do you want to clean any of that <laughs> up? Like, the, you know, stuff that voluntary ejected from the porch. Uh, yeah, there's uh, quite a bit of cleanup as it, not this dive, but the end of our final dive. So you're happy to leave all that stuff? Is that something I... For now, we don't want to put it in the tool basket yet till we have the big old Maris back in there in okay. case it clutters it up and makes it harder. And then where are we going to take this thing once we... Uh um, we're, you kind of have to follow that path between Dante and Grotto, past this, all the seismometers, or we can, or what we did the other time was follow it through faulty towers, you know, when we went over top of faulty towers. So that, and that, that means you'd have to go back to the IP and around the other side and just follow the Maris cable. So oh, that's going to be ship moves, right? Yeah. Is this the location that is west of Grotto? It's north. It's north, northwest. Yeah, northwest. Uh, okay. So it's um, if you look at your map there of Grotto, like just to your right where all that. So if on your mouse, if you, yeah, see a little left from there. Yeah. Okay. So it's north of there. You can see there's an RV track that went up off the screen kind of thing okay. to the north yeah it's it's way so up it's there so it's north of this yeah you can see that red kind of trail that's where it is can you uh now uh, for now let it move um in the ship like 20 meters uh 060 045 something like that get the neighborhood bridge nav can we move to zero meters zero six zero please Thank you. So we're going to play around here for a few minutes, so i got time to plan your attack. Yes, yeah, so Dan, last time we got there by going from Grotto over top of some vents and dropping into a valley, but we came back yeah, kind of the, the other way. Or the north and side, I kind of right? forgot which way we said we wanted to do it next time. Yeah, I don't know. So you come down a bit, Jake. Coming down. Yeah, so Steve from Shore is just saying that follow the westernmost oily, which is the one coming from the IP past North Tower. So that's the way we decided last time as well, I think. Yeah, I didn't go up to North Towers this time. Oops. Hey Jake, you got the whole ballast plan planned out. Let's, uh, I think we're gonna. The plan was to grab a Holt here. 
Did we already ditch the? We, we've done nothing, no. Okay. Well, we did the white balance and check the gauges. And why is there no handle over here? <coughs> the idea was to first ditch the bean bag, check to see whether what, what our ballast is after that, and then grab a weight if we feel like we need it. Yeah, so it's hard to judge this. Uh, I get pulled by Atalanta, so we're moving Atalanta towards us a little bit there. That's 30% down there. Are you holding? Do you hold, Herc? Feels like we're tight on the tether still. Is that true? Yeah. Adelanta hasn't really started to move. So we're light at, at am I doing that right? Minus? Minus, yeah. Normally. How heavy is the uh, floaty thing there? The floaty thing? Give me one second, I've got it here. Um, the new platform is in water 94 minus 55 so 40 pounds in water. Oh, nope. One second, let me re-look at that. Doesn't sound right. I'm, uh, it is. I thought it was like. Yeah, it's less. Survey says. Yeah, <laughs> hold on. Takes run these numbers too. Um, I got enough height. To, uh, you want to come up a bit and spin out a lot around? Yeah. We should be, uh, yeah, we can come up just a little bit and do a 180, or I mean a 360. 360. Okay. It's 24 minus 1. Coffee it should be thing. fairly light. It should be about like 20 pounds in water. Oh, other way. Yeah, so we're fairly light too. That's 40% jam on. That's with the two floats. Yeah. The floats are gonna stay on it. Um, the floats stay on it till, kind of till we're ready to swap the floats over to the other frame. Roger. So am I missing anything if I just grab it up now? There would be. It would be strapped down to the frame. You can see that orange. Um, yeah, but I mean, if I grab it up now and fly away with it. Am I going to be in trouble at the other end, ballast-wise, or should we be good? Oh, ballast. Um, just, so I, just so I'm clear, so you can't pick it up yet because it's still attached to the tool basket. Yeah, obviously. When we do. Uh, so we're really light right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. So you, you can, like, so you're asking whether you can grab it and hold on to it? Yeah, when we get to the other end, it's not... It's not crystal clear what we're going to do with it. Okay, so w when we get to the other end, there's another platform very similar to this one on the rocks already. All right. So we're going to land this very close to it. Right. And then you can see these two um, uh, kind of cinch straps that are on the top of this um, float. All right. They need to both be taken off of these floats and pegged into the grating of the other platform. I see, I see. And then we can pull these pins and the floats would go over to the other platform so that we can float it back. So that's nothing I'll be doing. I mean, I won't be changing my ballast at that point, right? Because we'll have this off. Just double checking. I think we're good. I think we're good to unhook it and grab it up. I'm almost too light as is. That's what it feels like. Sure does. What's your delta now? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I shouldn't be struggling with the... Uh, can't see the tether, it's nice and loose. Yeah, we're, so we're 40% there, so we're light, lighter than usual. Okay. It's a nice oil belt on the camera. Two of them. I wonder if it's inside or outside. Okay, 
So if we're landing here, can we just zoom in on some of this rigging? If you can hold, I don't know if you can, just so we make sure we yeah, got the right yeah. stuff. USBLs in there, mm. and three parking positions. There we go. Unfortunately, you see what you need to see there, Dirk. Uh, I would just like to zoom in on this on these pull pins just to see where they're attached. Oh, down low. Okay. I'm thinking we got to open the gate, and I'm thinking the. Uh, Puck gladiator, what do you call them? Gladiator? They're on the out, hanging out. Yeah, the, these are gladiators here. I don't know why they're lying down here, though. Yeah, so and I'm thinking the gladiators need to go inside and then we open the gate so we can get in there to yep. pull the pins and then that should <coughs> release the floats. Yeah, I think opening the gate would probably help out. You but I can't them, see. Uh, gladiators out of the way first. Sure, that works. Whatever, you, however you want to do it. The two hockey pucks up front. Yeah. As long as they don't get stuck so into the fiberglass, we're good. Gladiators, I got no idea what a gladiator is. A gladiator <laughs> is a hockey puck with a um, toggle, a bolt. butterfly nut on the end. So if you stick the butterfly nut into the grating, that's it. It's there forever. Okay. And that's something we can't get back out with a manipulator. So you have to be careful when you set them on the blue grate, on the green grate in there. Okay. But we're, uh, yeah, we're going to turn up my dry green a little. Maybe that's what's killing me. We're really late, so I'm considering uh, picking up that oven plate. Yeah, maybe just throw it on the porch. Depending if it doesn't have a three meter monkey fist on it. Oh, yeah, okay, perfect. You haven't had much minute time on this one, have you? No, I haven't. Not on this cruise. Okay, so gladiators first, or plate first. So, um, first thing, that beyond the gladiators, so if you want to ah. get them staged, that's fine. And then we can talk about the next step after that. Okay. Let's pick up that Alvin White first. Let's throw it on the porch there. Dan, there's no possibility of those gladiators landing, going through our porch, can it? Oh, yeah. That would be very bad. Oh, it wouldn't. I just cut them loose. <laughs> <laughs> Untie a new knot. Yeah, the gladiators are, uh, there's a risk associated there, Danny. They're one way. It looks like one might be already stuck in the, uh, stuck into the tool basket there. Yeah. All right. Where do we want this? Oh, uh, you know, Porch? Right. Yeah, put it like as close as you can to the bio box there, this little open area. Yeah, there somewhere. Okay, I've also got a bit more of a clear idea Maybe now what we're looking at. Right, can you give me an update? Bit, Jake. Yeah, give us a second. Um, I want it laying on top of the uh, that center. Yep. See, so and drag it right. forward a little, or to the side, one, one side or the other. It'll get caught up on the rail thingy. Okay, now, yeah. 
trapped old porch shit here. Dirk, it looks like they uh, won Gladiator, maybe gladiated already there. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath the, um... Can we zoom in? Zoom in that. there, Jacob? Yep, pushing in. So, I think it's just caught in that... It's just underneath of that, so it should be able to be pulled out as long as we're not Wedged horizontal in <laughs> or the wrong angle or something. But I don't think it's clipped. It clipped in there. It just fell in there. Roger. Okay, so Jacob, go in. I want to Or semi wide. So I think the first thing we want to do is pick those up and and um, yes, put, put them in. Put them in for sure. Yeah. And then Rye kind of who rigged it just gave me the, the rundown on the sequence to release this thing. So after this, I'll walk try you through the, that. Try the right one first, Jake. Right one first. Yeah, it's my freaking floating around here. Yeah, it's probably bunged around let on me, the uh, way down or something. Let me, uh, but I'm a little tight yeah. here. Yeah, let me see if I can get the ROV stable. I might want to grab on, but what? Well, uh, AJ did flip it, right? He flipped it to the other side, so. That's pretty <coughs> cool. okay. That's kind of the last change, but I think we got it. Makes sense. I'm going to rack the camera out just so you know. Slide it out here. Yeah, it should just pull out. There, you might have to turn oh. it a little. Might have to come down a little too. If you want some zoomy? Yeah, some zoom would be good. Go ahead, check up. Go Can't see zoom. what's going on. Okay, that's good. Looks oh, like it's possible. If you rotate your wrist to the left, just a hair. Yeah, you can oh, see it's so happening. close. Just caught on that bottom lip now. Maybe if you go down, go down more with the jaws. So, okay. yeah, oh, you got oh it. good work. Nice. Okay, okay go in. One wide. And I'll put it uh, in a way where it'll get caught in the inside there. Gladius. <laughs> Yeah, those those were um, I believe those were secured on the way down. So since then, that's kind of secured with what a rubber band. Might have been secured with nothing, but I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you can, yeah, don't, don't stick them into reach. anything. That's the problem. Say, so don't stick them into anything. Oh, if they get stuck through <laughs> the grating in there, we're not getting it. We have to deploy the whole tool basket. But it wants to. We want to put it on the green, correct? Yeah. Ideally, yeah. If possible. We can always move them again once we get the uh, door open. Yep. That's as far out as I can go. There. Yeah, bombs away. Good. Bubble cam is so digital with this controller. Yeah, I've got pictures of it. I should have put that earlier. Yeah, I'll pull up my old pics. Yeah, once. Um, yeah, even if it goes over top of the orange line, it's not a big deal. Well, to get we'll closer part. To find out. You can. We are gonna after this. The next step is to cut the or orange line. So whichever yeah. doesn't matter, it's gonna be cut, which would kind of let the floats float up a little bit. Oh, which is gonna pick the goddesses up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go on the left side, Jake. Left side of the. Yeah, left side of that orange line. We gotta cut that orange line. Maybe turn it the other way so the hockey pucks goes in oh. first. Just drop her in there. Okay. And bombs away. 
Cut the orange line. Both the orange the line orange and line. we can cut the orange um, ratchet strap line. Both need to be cut. Sweet. There's a knife in the toe box? Uh, there's a... Uh, you got two choices for n There's names. also two knives in the in the toolbox as well. Yeah, we there's one in, one in each toolbox. So there's one there on the porch. And the magnet one on the arm. There's the magnet one on the arm. I'll grab that one, I think. Uh, yeah, sure. Leave the tie wrapped one on the porch. Sure. There's some loose in the bio box if you need a third and fourth. Okay. Down a bit, make it easier. We're gonna need it anyways. Oh, I see the shadow here. It's out there somewhere. For nope. a down camera. There it is. Um, if you can, if you can, you might want to grab it. Uh, yeah, more like that. Okay. I can swing it to the right so it's easier. Yeah. Just slow down, make sure I'm not smacking the porch. I probably am. Wait, I got double. Yeah, I am. Wrist up. Right. I would uh, get your jaws like on the way to close. No, you don't get the hose there. You gotta go. Oh man! I was gonna say you gotta go in with your jaws. Yeah, semi-closed. Now you got it where you want it. <laughs> Into the bee bag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> right in the holster. <laughs> used to have a holster. Uh, if you want, oh. at this point, can't believe the bee bag actually helped. <laughs> I totally got it where you want it. <laughs> You're just following the steps to picking up the knife.